The next one we want to move forward is on the alphabet text. Let's go to the folder text. And it only has one file called inaccurate text. Let's open it. Okay, good. So over here, you can see the first worksheet. This one is to allow us to see how Excel or computer sees data. Let's key in the wording data in lower case. Let's key in the wording data in lower case. And when you press enter, the bottom it changes. Data for human is one word. But for computer, it means four alphabet or four characters. So let's add on after the small case data. We want to keep uppercase data. And then you press enter. For human, is two words. But for computer, how many characters or how many alphabet? Nine, including space. Interesting, right? The one at the bottom. And each of them will have something called ASCII code. ASCII code means American Standard Code of Information Interchange. Don't need to memorize. It just show you how computers store each alphabet. For human, small letter A and capital A, they are the same. Then how about the ASCII code? Are they the same or are they different? Different. So that means by default, Computer for all alphabet is case sensitive. They are different. Because some computers, they want to make it easier for us, they will do some internal processing to make sure they are the same. So this is how it works. So let's go to our data here again, go to the beginning. And we want to add tiny space after the last alphabet. Just one add tiny space and press enter. For human eye, we don't see any changes on the top. But on the computer level, do we say extra alphabet? Yes, this is the one. We cannot see by using this worksheet, we are able to see how the data works differently. Nice, huh? <laughs> now you can see the world like a lot of character. <laughs> now, uh, later on, when you encounter something doesn't work so well, you can copy and paste the data and put it inside here, observe how computer interpret each character. Now, now we want to go to the worksheet called clean trim. Clean trim. Let's copy the, the wording fox trot. Let's copy. Control C. And go back to previous worksheet understanding and just paste it over. Control V. Okay. Weird, huh? Very weird, huh? In the previous worksheet, it just show one wording, Fox Rod. But when we paste, uh, it just becomes the things broken down in multiple parts. Why? Uh? Okay, let's see. The ASCII code 32 is blank space, normal blank space. And between each character, what is the ASCII code? Number? What number? Number 10, yes. Number 10 is a special code. This is called non-printable space or non-printable character. And this line is called line fit. How we can line fit in Excel, we just press alternate enter. It allows us to break the data into multiple lines. Even though the line we cannot see with human eyes is also stored. This is how computers store every single thing. Got it. Okay, that's why we can see the whole thing broken down into multiple chunks. So let's go back to previous worksheet. Fox rod. Now we don't see the, the things broken down into multiple chunks. We go to home and click on wrap text. And it will broken down into multiple individual characters. That is because it doesn't broken down. So it perceived is one word. So now it turns off. Lah. 
Okay. We want to do some data processing or data cleaning. We want to do something called clean and trim. Let me explain what does that mean. Clean inside Power Query. Let me cut the wording. Clean inside Power Query is to handle those number 10. It will remove all of them for good. Sayonara, no more. Clean. And meanwhile, another one is called trim. The behavior of trim is slightly different than the Excel version. The Excel version will remove whatever in the beginning and whatever at the end. And in between character, you will leave one behind. But for Power Query, the trim is only work for the one in the beginning and the one at the end. Whatever in between, it doesn't take care. So there's a small difference between them and the Excel version. So now we want to use trim and clean to observe the behavior. And now we want to go back to the worksheet just now. Clean trim. Let's convert this whole thing into a table and change the name, table, text, clean, and trim. Good. After we have done this one, load this into Power Query. Let's go to data from table range. And it brings us to Power Query editor. A lot of transformation we can do just by right click on the header. It will bring us to the options available. So let's right click on the header, text data. Go to transform. Do you see trim and clean inside here? Yeah, just go for them one by one. It has no specific sequence because our data will not have any impact on that. Okay, I use use trim and then right click transform clean. Now they are back to one word. Once I'm happy with the result, I can go back to home, close and load to bring the data back to Excel. And can we trust Excel? Uh? Conspiracy theory now. Can we trust Excel? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we can trust and we want to verify. And verify. Double check again. Just to make sure everything works. So let's copy the Fox Road from the result from A2. Copy, Control C. And go back to the worksheet understanding text and paste it over and double check. Is it work perfectly? Yeah, always double check. Sometimes it may have interesting alphabet where normally we don't encounter. So this is how we're able to use trim and clean. And the next one, I want to invite you to do project number one and number two and have fun. Project one and project two so far okay? Good. And just for information, project number two is very interesting phrases. It has all 26 alphabet. All the sentences here, yes, all 26 alphabet A to Z. The first one is very popular. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Later you can find out. You can calculate one by one. <laughs> yes, okay, so this is about how we're able to take out the extra line or extra spaces. And in certain situation, we want to get um, the trim because the trim, it doesn't remove extra spaces in between text. So we need to do something a little bit extra. Let's go to the worksheet called text data. Text data. Over here, our data, it has extra spaces in between them. That means before, after the wording fox, and before you go to the wording jump, it has a bin between them. If normal trim in sub power three cannot handle. So we need to use something. This is a special way of handling. So before we go to power three, let's select the whole bunch of this one. Copy. And press escape. Don't need to change, don't need to change anything. Then convert the 
table, control T, enter. Change the name to table, text, data. Then we go to data from table range. Before we test on the formula or so-called things we have copied, what we want to do is we want to test it out using trim and clean, observe the behavior. The text data, we right click, we go and transform trim. Okay, right click, transform, clean. The spaces between the alphabet still remains. That is the behavior of using trim inside Power Query. Excel were able to remove them. This one cannot. So the last two steps I have added, so I can just remove them for now. And we go to add column, custom column. It will ask us for the column name and what is the formula we are want to use. So the column name I want to use is called clean text data. Clean uh, text data. And paste whatever thing you have copied just now. Okay. And this one will only take out the extra spaces in between the text. Later, we will see how the things behave. And at the bottom, it says no syntax errors. So the formula is correct. Let's click OK. You notice there are some extra spaces between them, right? That's because of the we need to perform the trim before this step. Because it has a one character between the spaces right here. There's one space, one extra line between them. Extra line will be influence the behavior of this formula. So I realized I need to perform a step before this one. So I click on the change type, just step before that. And then we right click on the text data, transform, clean, transform, clean. And then you ask us to insert the step in between them. Yes, we want to insert. Only after that, you go to the last step. Does it work correctly? Yep. Click one of them, double check on the data underneath, make sure they only have one space between them. That's because let me draw the, the diagram. Huh? Just now it was having 32, 32. And it has a number 10 in between them. So it doesn't know they are continuous. What we need to do is to get rid of number 10, make sure the 32 is one after another, so that with the formula just now is able to get rid the extra continuous spaces. Good. Okay, so now I'm happy with the result. How can I bring this back to Excel? Go to home, close and load. Thank you. Nice. So now I want to invite you to do something similar to practice on the project number three and number four. You can see it's a similar pattern repeating over and over again. The last one is a bit interesting. What if we have English and non-English together? In normal Excel, really not easy. So let's go to worksheet EN versus non-EN. On the top here, these are the rainbow color with different languages, Japanese and what's the next one? I can't remember. <laughs> See, I, so I cannot remember. So we are going to ask Power Query to extract the, the data out. The alphabet is A to Z. Because Power Query is case sensitive, uppercase and lowercase, they are different. So therefore we need to specify the uppercase A to Z lowercase a to z otherwise it will only take part of it so before we continue 
copy the formula here, copy. And then we convert the data into an Excel table, control T, enter, and change the table name, table color, non-EN, non-English. Then we go to data from table range. What we need to do is to add a column, add column, and we want to use custom column because we have our own formula to add on. So add our own formula, and you'll prompt us for the column name as well as the formula. So this is the color text, okay? And now I paste the formula inside. At the bottom, it says no syntax errors. So that means the formula is correct. And then when you press OK, you only see the text off of it. Then once you're done, you can just go to home, close and load, bring the result back to Excel. As long as we be within A to Z, uppercase, lowercase, it's able to grab the whole thing out. So it is very, very useful. Last time, I also encountered this question when the participant asked me for this question. I have no idea how to do it until I learn of how Pay is able to do so. Otherwise, using formula is not easy. Good. So now I want to invite you quickly do project number five and number six on your own and have fun. Some of the characters, you may be able to recognize them. The formula is supposed to not referring to the text data because here the column is not called text data, it's called proverbs. So change the text data to proverbs. You notice the data example. This one is uh, proverbs from three different languages, um, Chinese, English, and uh, Chinese, Korean, and Japanese. They are almost the same meaning. This one, uh, they are almost the same meaning. That means the thousand miles start from first step. I don't know how to read, uh, but I know the first one. Okay, good. So this is how we're able to do the data on the text. 